40. So can we start the final class for today? Uh, well, seems you are, many of you are tired now because it's kind of third class in a long day. So uh, we would like to kind of introduce one uh, exercise before we're going to start a class. Uh, in Japan, there is a kind of gymnastic uh, exercise. It's called radio gymnastics. And uh, this is kind of an exercise we do in, uh, every morning when we were in a, like a childhood. So, like, or even a factory, like a Toyota factory or a Sony factory, before they, go into, they, go in, they start working, they have a kind of like a group gymnasium together like a, it's in like three minutes. And uh, Mironobu will show you how to do it for, <laughs> with you in front of here. Radio <laughs> Taiso, <laughs> you don't know. Okay. You can follow the instruction video here. So please stand up. Okay. And uh, it's going to hit your friend. So make a, like enough space. Okay. So it gives a. It gives an instruction in the video, so just follow the instruction video. <laughs> I don't know, you, why don't you just try, give it a try? Okay. <laughs> ah, very good. <laughs> Ah, very nice. <laughs> Take a breeze. Let's do one more. One more? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, nice, you get a nice breeze and uh, exercise now. <laughs> okay, uh, now refreshed, hopefully. So, uh, for the class three, I'm going to explain about the digital innovation and its effect to the advertising industry. I, uh, so, this is a topic for the class three. And this is agenda. So, let's start. So first of all, I'm going to explain again from the digital uh, landscape of global, uh, global world. So again, <clears throat> this is uh, kind of big news for the digital ad spending exceeded uh, TV ad spending in 2016 in the US. Uh, so you can see uh, from the year 2016, now uh, digital ad spending exceeds the uh, TV ad spending in the U.S. As I mentioned in the first class, that the TV still is uh, like a, the largest advertising expenditure, but in the U.S. the situation is different. Now digital is more uh, main advertising expenditure media uh, in the U.S. Also, the, you can see the ratio of the growth in the right side. So it's kind of same situation in Japan. The TV is kind of stable, uh, but uh, digital video ad spending is like a, like a jumping now. Uh, like a year 2015, it almost increased 50%. And then in next year, it's still increasing in 30%. So after that, it's still ex uh, expanding uh, its size by 20, uh, 10 to 20%. Which is quite a lot. Again, 
was quite shocking for the shocking news for the Japanese advertising agency. Why is that? Because again, I explained that TV is the main advertising expenditure. Well, oh, sorry, sorry, our revenue stream for Dentsu, and the digital is still six percent of our revenue stream. But uh, <clears throat> again, in the future, this could be happen in the. Uh, in uh, could have could happen the same things uh, in Japanese market as same as uh, U.S. market. So why why does digital ad spending is getting bigger and bigger? What what do you why do you think? Uh, anybody has idea? Yeah. Because the internet uh, became more widespread than the previous years. Uh, internet uh, penetration, you mean? Yes. Uh, yes internet yes. user. Okay. Uh, yeah? Okay, so you trust more yes. in the contents or the friends' comments or recommendation from your friend. Okay, yeah, that's true, I think. Uh, any other idea? How many of you are watching TV still regularly? Nobody? For, so how about you, like, uh, watching TV like uh, one hour a day? More than one hour? No? 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 You don't use a TV, but do you watch TV by internet or? Sometimes yes. Uh, some programs, okay. TV, TV programs, but it's through the YouTube or those kind of things, or or TV broadcasting internet. Yeah. Uh, okay. I see. That's interesting. So you don't have TV at your house, or you do? But do how many how, how many of you don't have a TV? No TV. No TV. Oh, okay. How about your parents or grandparents? Do they still watch TV? Yes. OK, so that's the thing. Uh, so same in Japan, a lot of uh, elder people watch TV more compared to the younger generation. Yeah, so thank you for very much. Uh, so that's true. So this is the average time, daily time spent with the media uh, a coverage of the worldwide. So as you can recognize, yeah, you're right. So whole media except internet is decreasing and uh, a magazine like a traditional media as I explained like a newspaper magazine those are like a dramatically decreasing even the new uh, even the cinema like a people spending less time in the cinema what I heard interesting about Japanese young generation who are not going to the movie theater I asked them why you are not going to the to watch the movie theater with uh, your girlfriend or boyfriend together, right? Because it's kind of date, date spot to go to see, to watch the movie, and they said they have to. They said that they have to shut down the mobile phones so they don't go. They don't want to miss the message from their friends. So that's kind of uh, very strange to me, like uh, old age, like me and maybe Muto san. Uh, but uh, maybe this is kind of a, a trend or like a way of thinking, like a young generation has now. So that's why uh, internet uh, time spending is ex uh, expanding uh, as yeah. this graph shows. But uh, this is interesting that uh, when you look at the desktop internet penetration, like a uh, uh, daily time spent on the internet through the desktop is kind of decreasing as well. So it's kind of 34% degrees. So most of, most of the case people are using mobile phone. So this is a kind of trend. It's happening in the whole over the world. I think it's, it's same in Russia as well. So this is why uh, it, the reason is a smartphone. That's very simple. So more people spend time on the mobile as the number of the smartphone users increase uh, over the world. So now uh, more than 60% of the uh, mobile phone users are using smartphones. So that's why uh, people are using uh, uh, more 
time on the internet on the smartphone. So maybe a lot of you are doing the same things. And uh, it's quite surprisingly, by the year of 2020, uh, about 3 billion, which is like about uh, one third or more than one third of people are using uh, smartphones all over the world. So this uh, gives a lot of ideas to the advertising agencies. But this is, again, uh, explains the penetration of smartphones in Japan. So this is a kind of a regular scene for the commute train in Japan. Uh, so people sit on a, a chair, and then when you do take a, a detailed look at the, their hand, like a, they are touching all smartphones. So it used to be people were kind of uh, reading books or talking to friends, or uh, even in a Japan case, people a lot of people sleep on the and, uh, on the train. But nowadays. Uh, most of people are uh, spending a lot of time on smartphones. Well, maybe it's kind of the same because when you have a class and then you have something to communicate with your friend, you touch your smartphone. So uh, this is a quite huge uh, trend in the advertising agency. Now, so in a dense a revenue stream, like a 40% of revenue comes from TV, and it's still like a digital is 6%. But as like, um, uh, people spend more time on the mobile, I'm sure like, uh, digital uh, revenue stream from digital will expand uh, dramatically. So what this trend shows, in not only in Japan, but in other uh, mature market, or even uh, developed, uh, developing countries, uh, I'm sure digital and TV is going to be the most uh, ad advertising expenditure media in the near future. Uh, when I say digital, it has to be focused on, especially for the mobile, not on the desktop anymore. It's more like a mobile oriented. So some of you may work in an advertising agency in the, uh, in the future, but when you look at the, when you talk with clients, your focus has to be very uh, much to the mobile when you talk about digital. So this is kind of global trend. So let's take a, a cross look to the Japanese market more. Uh, <clears throat> so I was quite, uh, keep explaining about our revenue stream in Dentsu, but this is kind of digital expenditure in Japan uh, since the 2000, year 2000. Uh, millennium, and you can recognize like a TV has a very high, very high penetration, and the newspaper had the second uh, largest uh, penetration uh, in the market. But uh, almost except the TV, uh, as I explained before, newspaper, magazine, and radio are descending. Uh, so its market is very shrinking, and. As you can recognize, internet is uh, dramatically increasing the, its expenditure. So now it's kind of second largest uh, media in Japan as well. And uh, as you can see the trend, it's still uh, keep increasing. So it's going to be reach uh, TV uh, in the near future, maybe next five years too. That's why, as, I'm, as I said, like digi digital and TV is going to be the most revenue, like a most important revenue stream for the advertising agency. So again, uh, looking into the smartphone trend in Japan, uh, as uh, you said, like uh, in Japan, same, like 80% of Japanese people are using internet uh, regularly. And uh, of course, people under 50 years old are uh, accessing internet by a smartphone more than computer. So, <clears throat> uh, so maybe I'm not sure about uh, about you here in Russia, but in Japan, like high school students or uh, even uh, maybe younger university students, they don't touch desktop computers anymore. So they even make, they even write a thesis on the smartphones. So they don't know how to type the uh, keyboard because they don't know they don't use it. They don't have to use it. That's a kind of trend. Uh, but uh, they can t like uh, type uh, the letters in the smartphone uh, maybe three times higher, it's like a faster than me. So that's a trend. Uh, so as you can s recognize teenagers and the years from the 20 to 29, also the 30s, uh, use uh, smartphones most of the time uh, to, to access the internet. And also, uh, 
<coughs> internet users is very uh, same message here. Uh, internet users is very high in general, but a smartphone shows a rapid rapid growth here. So people are accessing uh, to the internet contents uh, through smartphone and also the tablets. So you can see a kind of a trend here. Uh, rapid growth in uh, smartphone and tablets, but uh, PC is kind of decreasing. So that's why, like uh, Intel uh, or like uh, Microsoft, sorry, uh, uh, some of the like Japanese uh, desk uh, laptop uh, companies like uh, Sony, uh, Fujitsu, uh, NEC, those like uh, computer makers uh, struggling now to sell the uh, laptop computers. That's why. Uh, he, like a Sony uh, sell their computer uh, division to other company now. So Bio is not belong to the uh, Sony anymore now. So this is a kind of trend. And uh, this is a, a top 10 web properties in Japan uh, a, where the people accessing to the internet, which is a, like a portal site. So, uh, in many countries, Google is the number one uh, a portal site. So people go to Google first to research, uh, like the US or Canada or Australia. But Japan, Google is actually the second place. Uh, and then third is Microsoft, and the fourth is MSN. MSN and uh, five, fifth is Rakuten. Rakuten is an e-commerce uh, portal site company. And then, so now, again, more than Google, it's actually, it's more like a 10 million, 10 million unique users more uh, have another uh, website. What do you think? Like, let me give me a guess. Yahoo. Yahoo, why? I think, I don't know why. You just, <laughs> just got a feeling, yeah. Uh, any other thoughts? Yes? Yes, you're right. Uh, so, whoo. Uh, Yahoo is a kind of most popular uh, portal site in Japan because I think uh, when we started internet in Japan from 2000, uh, 1995, uh, Yahoo was the one that who gave the portal site first. So Japanese people get used to the its kind of interface and also uh, Yahoo Japan. I'm I'm sure not many people access to the Yahoo Japan site. But it's quite different from other uh, Yahoo portal site. So I'll show you this. So left side is uh, Yahoo Japan uh, top page. And uh, he, the right one is the US, US the Yahoo top site. So you can see a uh, difference, uh, obviously, here. And I think last year has uh, this type. Am uh, I right? Maybe. Maybe not. But. So the interesting read, the US side here, everything shows the news, actually, like a portal site. But in Japan case, uh, there are a lot of contents. And it's kind of complex and complicated and hard to see. But still, people enjoy this uh, format uh, because there is a news there. And there is advertising there, which is we call like a rich advertisement. But we're going to explain later. And also, there is a content ad. So, like uh, Japanese people uh, prefers more like a uh, contents, like uh, and they uh, enjoy the contents which were given from the uh, platforms. So, this is kind of a different character of the people. So, this is also important when you think about advertisement. So, even when you think about Japanese people's characteristics and also the U.S. Uh, people's characteristics and also Russia's. Uh, people's characteristic and even the uh, Asian countries are uh, characteristics are whole different. So you have to change uh, all those in, uh, contents which is suitable or preferable to the people like that. This is a uh, kind of biggest uh, difference uh, from the traditional media uh, to the digital uh, contents. Okay, I'm going to touch that in detail more later. Uh, but uh, let me explain a little bit about the kind of uh, quick landscape of the SNS penetration in Japan. Uh, so have you ever heard of uh, the platform called Line? Line? No? Line. Uh, Line. It's a messenger, right? 
Yeah, it's a messenger. I think uh, it's, uh, this is uh, the line is the most popular SNS in Japan. And uh, our population is 1.3 billion. So almost like a half of people are using line. And then uh, monthly unique user, active user is almost like a 41 million uh, people are unique user in Japan. So like 60% of the registered people are using line. Uh, so we communicate with my family or friends or even the colleagues uh, through the line. And uh, of course, obviously, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram is very popular in Japan. And, uh, but again, ah, uh, line is the most popular SNS in Japan. But interestingly, Twitter is kind of a popular in Japan as well. Uh, I think the like, Twitter is popular only in US and Japan. So Twitter is now like a <coughs> uh, they think like a Japan as a very like a strategic market. So Dentsu and Twitter has a very strong relationship to uh, produce the original marketing tool uh, to provide to the clients. So I don't know why. Maybe because like uh, tweeting and anonymously. A, in the short tech is, is fit to the Japanese uh, culture and the characteris characteristics. Uh, that's, what, that's kind of the reason that uh, we have like a high Twitter penetration rates in Japan. So again, uh, here this uh, trend shows that the, a lot of people use uh, those SNS through the uh, mobile phone. So not many people are accessing to the he, uh, those SNS through the internet, uh, sorry, uh, uh, mobile, to mobile uh, sorry, uh, desktop computer, but uh, they use mobile for more. It's kind of uh, surprising that uh, now, uh, even in Japan, 93% of people are accessing to the Facebook through the uh, smartphones. And uh, even the YouTube, they watch the movies uh, through smartphones. So this kind of this, these trends have a lot of effect to the uh, contents uh, making for the advertising agency. So and since peop, a lot of people are watching these videos uh, through the internet, I mean uh, smartphones, uh, online video advertisement is kind of growing like a hum, like a jumping too. So. They making not only the digital banners, but uh, making the videos, digital videos, uh, which is uh, preferable to watch through the smartphone, uh, is more getting more popular, and also the key uh, key things to key capability that advertising agency must have. And as you may know. Like uh, SNS is like a Line or WeChat in China, or uh, like a Facebook or a WhatsApp are uh, getting more than communication too. They are becoming more like a social infra infrastructure now. So instead of just sending a text or message to your friend, you can make a payment uh, through the, those SNS, and also the, you can listen to the music, and even you can watch the movie. Uh, you can reserve the restaurant, you can do the shopping, uh, or even you can find a job through the, those SNS, uh, like a, more like a part-time job. But, uh, so again, uh, so these like, SNS tools is taking over whole, like, uh, whole like, tools uh, which existed in uh, before. So you don't have to go to the bank, you, have, can, do, you can do everything through the uh, mobile phones. So this is a big uh, trend and also disruptive uh, trends that are going on in uh, actually society itself. Not, in, not only in uh, advertising agency, but the whole industry is affected by this trend and movement. So when you think about the service or uh, communication to the customers, uh, of course you have to like, think about like, every people accessing to the uh, the cost, uh, sorry uh, to these services or even the products through the internet and uh, through the mobile phone so this is a, this will be the starting point to think about the communication or a campaign when we start to work in an advertising agency
Okay. Uh, so this was a, a quick uh, uh, overview of the digital landscape globally and also in Japan. Now I would like to deep in, uh, dive into the diff more detail in dig digital advertisement. Uh, so first of all, I would like to explain about difference between the mass mass advertisement and uh, digital advertisement. There are actually four main uh, different points uh, between these two advertisement, which is, uh, which is uh, one to one. And second is more like uh, digital advertisement is more interactive. And uh, third one is shareable. So digital, with, you can share the digital advertisement. And the fourth one is measurable. So. Before digital advertisement came into the market, uh, mass media, as is like a, as it was said in a word, like a literary, it says mass, right? So the content give to the mass people, to, to the more like a, a lot of people at the same time. So sending the same contents with the same message to the a lot of people at the same time. But uh, when you have a digital ad. It's more like an individual, and also it used to be. It was more like a one-way communication from a TV or a magazine or newspaper to the customers. But when you are uh, using smartphones or other internet uh, devices, it's more like an interactive. So you can interact with uh, brands, or you can get comments or those kind of things. And of course. If through the uh, SNS like uh, Facebook or uh, Instagram, you are connected to the, your friends. So what you find interesting, or you, what you find, uh, a, what you uh, experience, you can share immediately with your friends. And also, it used to be when we use the mass media mainly. It was only like a kind of sending. We couldn't know how many people were watching the TV program. And then we can, could kind of uh, uh, calculate how many people are watching the TV commercial as well. But it was not accurate. But uh, digital, ad uh, digital advertisement, advertisement uh, totally you can uh, measure uh, a, the effect of the advertisement, not only the past time, but also in the real time now. So this is a kind of four different uh, difference between the mass and digital advertisement. So let's give a little bit of exp uh, uh, case studies for the each one. So for the one-to-one, -one, a case of Facebook, this is obvious, but uh, when I access to the uh, Facebook, and also when uh, Muto-san access to the Facebook, obviously we see a different uh, advertisement, even we access to the same time. Of course, my interest and Muto-san's interest are different. So digital advertising agency, or even the clients, uh, tracking all your interest from your uh, like a behavior uh, in uh, those SNS, so they pretty much have ideas what you have interest you what you are interested in and what how like what kind of friends you have and uh, what kind of needs do you have. So based on this analysis, uh, these SNS or platformers uh, uh, distribute a advertisement which you, is uh, most preferable to you uh, when you access to the SNS. So and the second one is in interactive. Uh, so interactive means like uh, when you see the contents. You enjoy it, but when you enjoy it, you can involve into the like, uh, contents making. So I'd like to exp uh, show the uh, business case from Australia. Uh, this is very popular uh, content, so you may know. Uh, it's called Dumb Way to Die. How many knows? Okay. Oh, great. So this is a kind of a campaign to stop like uh, people get get involved to the accident in the subway. So sometimes people cross the uh, station uh, to the next like uh, station uh, so to how, how can I say? next the station crossing the uh, lanes or even they like across the when the alarm is 
around lines down, they just go through anyway. So people get into the accident, those things. So, but this is very like a stupid way to die. So that's why uh, advertising agency created a funny uh, movie, uh, which I uploaded in, uh, in their internet, like uh, Australians uh, trains uh, website. So please watch this one first. So the reason why I pick up this for the interactive, well, of course, as you may recognize and enjoy, this is like a very high quality content. Like content is very uh, well built, and of course, like uh, enjoyable. But the uh, things that they, when they plan this one, they kind of uh, think that people will make original content based on this one. So they spread uh, like music. To the, to the world, so people can download the music and uh, they can originally make their build uh, uh, original content. So, so advertisers, this mean like in this case, Melbourne Metro doesn't have to use, uh, don't ha doesn't have to use the media spend. Instead of they spend the money, people like uh, customers like all over the world creates their own uh, like, uh, content uh, similar to this one and then spread to the world through the YouTube or other SNS, and then people watch that. So in this case, people will run and know about the, this campaign. So this is kind of a, like a, have a crowd, like a, a, can I say, the kind of a collaboration effect on that. 
uh, to know about their campaign. So I'll show you one of the example, uh, one of the contents was made based on this one. So this is my kind of a same content, but which is mixed with Lego. So people make uh, animation, same kind of animation uh, using the Lego. But this is not made by Lego. This is just made by the customers, right? So this is kind of a lucky, lucky movie for the Lego as well. So because, because it's advertising a Lego uh, coincidentally. So this is kind of a beauty of the interactive uh, part of the digital campaign. So people get involved into the advertising in the digital world. So that's why planners or campaign planners has to think about how people will play with those contents provided by the uh, clients. So this is a beauty of the, and also the technique uh, which like a good planner has, like how people will share and uh, interact with their contents. So, and then third is a shareable. So, again, the the last case, the case from a Melbourne, Melbourne Metro, is was good case for the interactive and also shareable. So people make their original content and they share it. But so, interactive and shareable is a very important uh, key factor for the. Uh, digital advertisement, and this is a good case from the Nike. So, have you ever seen like like a left one Nike Light the Future, which is uh, like made in 2010? Uh, how many? Yeah, one. So, like a Nike is the kind of biggest like uh, world advertising uh, clients, and then they spend like billions of the advertising exp uh, media uh, media expenditure in TV and also the newspaper and the old, uh, billboards and those kind of things. But uh, in year 2010, when they had a World Cup in uh, South Af Africa, uh, one of the agency in the States uh, proposed to the Nike, instead of using the, like, uh, a lot of money, like uh, billions of money to the media, uh, they proposed to the Nike that uh, why don't you make a, like, a high quality, like a super high quality uh, TV commercial? Like a, like a movie film. Then they did it. They made, they spent one billion, uh, no sorry, one billion is too much. Uh, <laughs> 10 million to create uh, this film. And then they uploaded it to the, uh, to their, to YouTube. Uh, so please watch this one. And then, uh, so in 2010, the internet was still very kind of uh, low speed, but uh, people watched like seven million times uh, in the six days. So this was, was quite like a first uh, viewed content at that time.
So actually, so you see a lot of like a famous football players or even NBA players inside of this commercial film. Only Nike can do this, but still, like uh, they s didn't spend a lot of uh, instead of spending a lot of money on the media expenditure, uh, they s they s paid more to production film, uh, uh, film production. So in this case. You don't, they don't have to like, uh, share, like, uh, distribute their content. But like, customers or their, fan, their fans uh, distribute those contents to the, uh, the Nike fans or even the like, uh, sports players. So this gave a lot of uh, impact. As you said, like, uh, people trust only what people said, like a friend said. So if you, uh, this content was like, uh, recommended by the uh, friends, they trust more about the Nike instead of like a Nike keep sending a message to people. So this is like a kind of a big trend. And also this is like a where the like a advertising agency has to come in to give a plan to make a those production, like a contents. So there's another one, but you can see the in the internet later. And the fourth one is measurable. So again, as I said, when you, when like a mass media, it's hard to measure precisely its effect, but uh, like uh, advertisement in a digital advertisement are perfectly, like uh, you can completely measure uh, its, uh, its effect uh, through like uh, every day. Not only in a certain amount, but you can measure every day and in real time as well. So let's get into the more detail about the, this measurable part. So, there are mainly two types of the digital ad advertising. One is like a reserve digital advertisement, and the other is a program programmatic digital advertisement, which shows the difference here. So reserve digital advertisement is more like a TV, ad TV advertisement or magazine advertisement, the same. So it's like a, in Japan, we call it a Yahoo brand panel. So when you access to the top side of Yahoo, uh, everybody watch that, like, uh, the, the banner there. So clients decide the budget, length, and uh, advertisement position beforehand. So this is pretty much the same to the like, uh, TV and mag magazine, as I mentioned. But uh, programmatic digital ad is more like a, a you see when you research or uh, you access to the <coughs> those of the research portable site. So you, when you put somewhere like a, say like a hotel, you get some related ad on the where you covered by the lead uh, square there. So only in this case, clients decide roughly a budget and uh, times time length and also the position. But uh, it's only it. But the operation is uh, now it's like a, a now in the hand of the advertising agency. So looking at the result, analyzing the result of the, this advertising effect. Advertising agency changed the budget and length and also the, even the target and the contents uh, based on the results of the advertising agency, advertisement. So that's why like a programmatic, dis, a pro programmatic digital ads are getting more like a popular and popular. So now kind of a reserved advertisement is decreasing and, the, and the grow, uh, 
programmatic digital advertising is kind of growing. And its growth rate is 130% in Japan, compared to last year in 2015. So, <clears throat> uh, so again, uh, this is kind of two reasons why like, a programmatic advertisement is preferred by the clients. So clients can decide and change time length and the budget for the campaign flexibly. So they don't have to like uh, invest t tons of uh, uh, money uh, as a mass media. So they can start uh, their campaign even one day, and then start from a minimum budget of five thousand US dollars. And also, uh, grants are possible to increase effect and efficiency of advertisement by keep uh, doing the PDCAs. So conducting an A, 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 and, A and B test, which you shows like a create two contents and shows to shows one to the different uh, oh sorry uh, shows a contents to the 50 percent of the advertisement budget and shows content B uh, to the other another 50 percent and then if contents a works more they get they invest more money on the uh, content a so this is a kind of a B test which is uh, easy to uh, conduct in the digital. And also, they can even change the targets to distribute uh, uh, advertising contents, and also degrees or even de uh, increase the budget at any time. So it's more flexible compared to mass media. So that's why uh, clients and also the clients are very kind of uh, prefer to this like flexible uh, advertisement budget. So it used to be when uh, we care, uh, we handle only mass media, we listen to more clients' needs. So what clients want to say and what, who, want, who they want to distribute. So our ad advertising agency's role is to uh, listen to their needs. But when digital comes in, now we have to listen to the customers' needs as well. So what customers are react, how customers are reacting to the digital advertisement and uh, what they are kind of uh, requesting or demanding at the real time. So the main purpose of the advertiser, advertiser, advertising agency is to kind of balance both needs. So by balancing the, their both needs, we can increase the effect of the advertising uh, advertisement. So that's why uh, our role and uh, work is kind of getting complex uh, uh, in this way because not only the technology things, but we have to listen to the client's needs or the customer's needs. So the planners, media planners or even the creative planners has to lead more like a customer's insight like uh, Muto-san mentioned. Uh, from the data or the result uh, we get from those like a media uh, report. But uh, the fruits we get from the, this like, uh, analysis uh, is kind of clear as well. So if we do the PDCA and the plan first, and then at the, at the first, at the, with a budget, a certain amount of budget in January, let's say like a first one, in January with a certain amount of budget, a client couldn't reach to the enough conversion rate, which is a let, let line is uh, placed. But after keeping a PDCA, which is like a analysis and uh, making kind of a limitation to uh, improve the advertising effect, after half a month, ah, sorry, after half a year, uh, finally, the conversion rate uh, uh, past the threshold of the uh, clients. Now, clients uh, satisfy with the analysis of the advertising agency, so they added more budget to the uh, campaign. And then, after another three months, since the conversion rate still increased, so clients now triple the triple the budget from the first. Uh, budget. So this is the kind of fruits that we get from the digital advertising analysis. So we, when we have a good analysis, uh, clients increase the uh, budget uh, for the digital advertisement. Um, and then uh, when we do a PDCA, we utilize a dashboard like this, which is like a 
you see those like a uh, graph with it, and also the kind of a uh, uh, shows a circle graph, which uh, uh, website people are more coming to, and uh, on, on also shows which targets are more like a uh, uh, answering like a uh, converting to the advertisement. So now it used to be like a advertising is think about uh, so so like it's more like a, a creative type of job which is more like a people use right brain uh, but now like a whole since uh, digital came into the trends of the advertising agency advertising industry uh, more like a scientific now so that's why a lot of engineer uh, people are hired by the those advertising in uh, market now and they are they're developing these like uh, to marketing tools, and also they are hiring data scientists who can clean up the a lot of big data to find uh, uh, the in customer insight through the those data. So that's why now the di talents in uh, advertising agencies kind of complex and uh, diversified now. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so. Since like uh, it's easy to target uh, customers in the digital advertisement, uh, it is very important select uh, to important to select the appropriate appropriate menu uh, from several several menus uh, for each target based on the interest level of customers. So we regularly uh, classify the customers uh, to the three inter uh, three. Customers, which has like a first of all high interest rate and a middle interest rate and a lastly low interest rate. So again, when we do a mass media, you make a one good quality content, but you distribute it to the like the people at the same time who has a different interest rate and who has different uh, behavioral data, uh, behavioral characteristic. But uh, of course. There's different, right? Like uh, even like uh, my age, like uh, maybe now I want, I prefer more water, but maybe Mironov uh, prefers uh, like a Coca-Cola more uh, compared to the water. So like uh, looking into this like a character, uh, customer's behavior or characteristic, uh, selecting these like a type of different type of the advertising meant and also distribute this uh, uh, advertisement at the right moment is more important. So there are so many uh, advertisement uh, menus, uh, like a SEO, listing, affiliate, targeting, banner, uh, retargeting, movie ad, content, those kind of a lot of uh, advertisement is developed in each year, like as advertising technology is improving. So I would like to, uh, introduce some of them. So listing ads, this is kind of uh, obvious, like as you s see in the previous slide, when you search certain word, uh, the, the text uh, advertisement shows up after your research. So this is effective for the high and uh, also the middle interest level of customers because of course, you search, you search for the certain words, there is a needs there. So if you search for, say, travel, or uh, like a travel to Japan, so obviously you're interested in traveling to the Japan. So the travel agency advertisement uh, will show up in uh, this red part. So this is a listing ad. And the second one is uh, SEO, which is a uh, notation for the search engine optimization. Uh, this is kind of a, a way to increase the, your position uh, show up in uh, this green part. So red part is uh, covered by the uh, this thing ad, but uh, this like uh, green part is kind of original uh, search uh, site. So so how you make a website, corporate website, affects the research effect. So. Following the rules of the platformers like a Google or Yahoo uh, or even a Facebook, uh, there is a certain rule to show up your banners or uh, website 
uh, on top of the research result. So, and the people, of course, maybe you're same, uh, that the people trust uh, original research more than the advertisement. So, to getting the higher position uh, in the, the organic search is more important uh, for corporate website uh, for the clients. So, that's why uh, we support uh, clients uh, to optimize their website to control their ranking in uh, organic research. So this is also effective for the high interest level uh, customers because they trust more uh, what they search. And then there's a true view. This is obvious. Like uh, you see the when you access to the YouTube, you see the movie in front of uh, before you watch the original content that you access. And uh, and I'm sure this is kind of big product for the Google as uh, for the YouTube. But I'm sure a lot of people are kind of annoyed by this advertisement. So once they started, you, after five minutes, you just click and uh, close, uh, shut down the advertisement. So there are some of the like uh, wise uh, agency created uh, a, a contents uh, which is uh, for the Geico. This is an insurance company. So like uh, they find out like a lot of people skip the advertisement even they buy a uh, true views. Uh, space, but so, but you have to watch five seconds at least, right? So they advertise agency come up with idea to uh, solve this problem. So this is they call it as a unskippable, uh, unskippable commercial. Let's watch that. Don't thank me. Thank the savings. You can't skip this Geico ad because it's already over. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. So now it's five seconds. So the message is delivered in five seconds. And of course, content goes on. So if you watch, of course, you can enjoy the still the content, but the main message was delivered in the first five seconds. So even people don't watch, uh, the message is delivered. Uh, to the customers, uh, to the customers. By the <laughs> by the way, uh, content is also funny too. The another version is here. So, what do you say? I say savings. You can't skip this Geico ad because it's already over. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance. Oh, well, Peter. So much. So actually, in the five seconds, they don't say anything. They just deliver a message of their services. But this is a point because if uh, like a viewers uh, skip their ad, clients doesn't have to pay. So more people skip, they get like uh, they save their money. Like clients save money. So this is kind of a wise, very wise uh, way of making uh, contents contents. Uh, and this is an ad network. Uh, this is quite complicated, but uh, Google and Yahoo, they like a kind of a, have a group of the a target. So this is a, there are a lot of like tons of website in the internet. So clients are kind of skeptical like uh, where their content will be showing up. So that's why Google or Yahoo will handle like uh, then promise we will show the, your like uh, advertisement in this uh, certain uh, like, uh, website so people trust more like those networks that's why like uh, Google or Yahoo or other platforms have their own networks to uh, make clients believe uh, the effect of the advertisement the good case about this one is that like uh, for example, if people jump around like a uh, YouTube to say like a uh, uh, Glee or Mixy, and then Google can track how people move around in the advertisement, so they can track the customers' behavior more precisely. Uh, and then this related to the retargeting ad, so 
maybe you kind of have a pre, uh, experience that once you search in Amazon or some e-commerce site, and then you look at the certain products, it shows up uh, again and again every site you uh, visit. So this is also, an, again, annoying, but this is very important kind of a sign for the uh, clients because there's kind of a certain uh, requirements or for you to in have an interest in the product. So maybe now the like, technology is advancing, so people kind of controls after you watch a certain amount of the products, then uh, the next time you see it, maybe after two or three days later, the, the content will show up when you forgot. So this is their, what they're doing uh, with, uh, in the, their network. Uh, by analyzing the your behavior of data, and this is also the beauty of the leading uh, behavior of data of uh, your a website uh, watching behaviors. And uh, there's an interesting case of retargeting uh, from the post-it. So again, kind of some people uh, agree that uh, it's kind of annoying to see a lot of same like uh, banners. Uh, on the website because it's just saying delivering the same message to you, but the post is so like if you once delivers the uh, information which you need or you kind of uh, prefer, uh, then it's not annoying anymore. So it's happy to see uh, the important message or like variable message to you again and again. So this is a case. So again, like uh, technology is just technology, actually. So again, if you see the like, uh, same kind of message following you like again and again, it's kind of annoying. So it damages the brand. So what we have to do as an advertising agency is has to give an idea into it, and then uh, utilizing the media at the good way, and then give a solution which affect the customer's uh, like, uh, image or uh, and they stimulate their uh, kind of a, 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 a they're kind of a, a consuming uh, interest, and then people get more like an interest into it. So when we think about solution, we also ha we always have to think about the customer's insight first, and don't just rely on the media. So give an idea which is affect which is effective to the customers, and then utilize the technology to make it more maximum, uh, to get uh, more maximum effects from it. So this is a kind of beauty of uh, like a advertising agency can get can give value, value to the clients. And also, there is a content ad. So. What we just explained is just like a, like banners and uh, other words, which is like a research words that you see in a, a website. But content ad is not like a, it's not looks like a advertising anymore. It's more like a news article or contents. So instead of like a people uh, to kind of show uh, a, on the website, peop, contents ad is more like a people access to the content so by themselves more proactively. So in this case, 
people will think like a don't uh, people don't even realize it is advertisement. So by reading those articles like uh, uh, prepared by the clients, uh, but you are reached there uh, by yourself. So you enjoy the content, and then now you will start to kind of uh, liking about the brands or con like uh, services itself. So this is kind of more like a like a, a hidden ad. So you will not even realize it is an uh, advertisement. Uh, and then that's why this is more effective for like a middle and low interest level customers. And there is a kind of a, like a high technology of uh, content ad, which is uh, uh, called Outbrain. So for example, when you access to the like a certain, like a soccer, sorry, sports uh, article, and then you start reading uh, those articles, and then you see the recommended articles at the end of the articles, and then that case, you see a whole different articles in the, each different person because everybody again has a different interest rate, so uh, interest. So, like, uh, if I'm interested in more in like, uh, uh, say, mm, water. Uh, after reading the sports article, say like uh, this is a uh, water, like uh, water affects the like a uh, sports uh, result, or like a uh, water recovers the your damage after your exercise. So those kind of article is prepared by the uh, water company, and then you will read that through because like uh, you don't even realize it is like a uh, advertisement. But uh, in the law, it's uh, said that it has to be, if like article is prepared by the comp like a clients, it has to list it in uh, articles. So it will be show up like this, say, say like recommended by Outbrain. But people will read it, read it anyway because it's kind of little, little, uh, relevant to their interest. Uh, so in this way, uh, proactively people read the article. So this is a, a, a ad recommend type of the advertisement, content recommend type of the advertisement. So <clears throat> digital advertisement is kind of a mix of those kind of things. So it's not only showing the content on the internet, it's not enough. So leading the behavior or characteristic, characteristic of the customers, and then you set whole contents in each uh, level. So if people are still low interest, you prepare like a more like a broad uh, information type of content or like a contents which people have interest. But if you have more like a high interest and you are almost there to buy, you just explain about the function of the content, like a product or service, because that's what they are searching for. So not only creating the like uh, interesting, funny or like cool content is not enough. So leading the customer's behavior and the insight and the prepared, uh, preferable, suitable content for each stage is uh, more important for the advertising agency. And it's kind of main role for, the, for us to do, to do that. Okay, uh, so that's, uh, that's all about the digital ad advertisement. And then uh, we have uh, 50 minutes. But uh, okay. Uh, so since uh, we have 15 minutes left, and then uh, you learned about three classes today. Uh, we would like to introduce how we train the planners in uh, Dentsu. So we give you a kind of assignment.
話して、一個やってみましょうみたいな。うん、OK、so、uh, so everybody has now? OK。So this is kind of an example of how we train、uh, the newcomers for as a planner. So please look at the first page. So for like a leading advertising context, like、uh, we ask like people, like、uh, what kind of advertisement、uh, you have seen and got interest in lately, and what about the ad affected you. So first of all, find out advertisement,、uh, advertisement, advertisement which caught your attention, and then、uh, other than advertisement,、uh, what kind of a A company or product services that you are interested in your SNS. So you find out, you ask like a newcomers to search for the content where you see interested、uh, in a SNS or other in a website, those kind of things. And after that, ask, we will ask them to think why you are interested in those kind of a, a, a content and what makes you、uh, interested in those、uh, contents. And then give us a, give, let's ask them to give us a reason why you are attracted to the, this、uh, content. In this case, you will think, like usually people, well, when we live in a normal life, you don't think why it's good, but、uh, you think like something is good. But、uh, we, our job is to find out what is something. What something, something that attracted you is the kind of key、uh, to think about the campaign and the contents. For the clients, and also another case for the second,、uh, uh, another training case is in the second page.、Uh, like a, we said, it like a, a gift for the one you admire. So, for example, for in case like please choose one person you admire, and then think about the, if you give a present to this admired person, what kind of gift you give, right? And then for the next page,、uh, for just case in case suppose like suppose you have a rival to the to this admire per person, what kind of a, like a, how you going to change the present like a present like a, you think you plan at the first moment, and then、uh, give like a train like a, how you change the, your plan、uh, to win、uh, your competitors or rivals. And the third one is like a interpre、uh, interpretation of the campaign. So we do a backcast from the business case. So we see the business case in a, like as you saw in a, our presentation, and then you will think like how people like planners in advertising agency came up with this idea. What was their insight of the customers, and how they presented to the client. So these are the training that we do,、uh, as an example. And then,、uh, well, we still have ten minutes. So why don't we try number two? So, can we can we ask you to work on the seat number two first, and then please choose one person you admire, hero or heroine, and then think about the gift. For the birthday, as a birthday gift for this admired person. So, let's work individually. Maybe three minutes. Brainstorm. まあ、でもライバルがいる前提でも考えたほうがいいかもしれない。うんうんあ、sorry to confuse you here.、Uh, so please choose one person that you admire or, or anybody is fine.、Uh, And then please skip this part because we have a short time here. So going to the next part. So you have a rival to the person、uh, you are planning to give a present. So 
brainstorm like, a, like as many as possible uh, to uh, make it more effective uh, to the to the person when you give a gift. And then when you make it effective to these people, you have to think about the, their personality or like uh, their inside, actually. あ、3 でも日本のコンテンツを探してくれっていうとこないといけないですよね。<笑> 